G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. Today I'm doing an apple cider. I haven't done an apple cider in ages. What I'm doing is a Mangrove Jacks craft series recipe number seven. It's a blueberry cider. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a good one. So if you like the idea of it, stick around. Before I start today, I want to give you guys a bit of a story. I have brewed this once before. Uh, when I first got my Firmzilla, I thought, ah, oh, give it a go, pop it in my Firmzilla and see how it goes. Uh, it came out okay, but it wasn't impressive, so it turned me off brewing apple ciders altogether for a while. With my now acquired skills, I uh, hope that this one will turn out a lot better. I had a little bit of a few off flavours, which I'm trying to avoid this time around. <sighs> so the ingredients we're going to need are uh, a bottle of wine that I made just recently, a wine glass, actually I made this a while back, and that's just for me to enjoy while I'm doing this, cheers, hmm, oh, beautiful Merlot, beautiful, anyway what I really have to do is basically prepare our brew, so what we've got is a one kilo bag of dextrose, your recipe number seven from Mangrove Jacks has a few things on the back. I'll show it to you there. Um, I'll, I'll pop a, a photo of it up on the up on the corner here as well, uh, and we shall make it. There is instructions on the back to tell me how to do it, and uh, as a as I've been doing this for a while, I kind of know. Um, all I have to do is basically dissolve my dextrose, as well as add all the contents of the bag. So I'd like to drop a shout out to Little John from Little John's Brewing. Uh, <laughs> mate, I, I love watching your videos. Very, very informative. Awesome to hear the little ideas and little things you do. Great stuff. The biggest thing I noticed was earwigs. Now I have earwigs in my lines. Now I've hung them up out the way so they can't get in. But look, I'll show you. This line, this line here is hung. I have... There, an earwig in there, look. The little bugger, they get in there. I don't know how they get in there. And we, we just don't need them in there. But they're in there, so I'll blow them out. <laughs> don't know where he is. I think he's out. Can you see? Right, earwigs are getting in the lines. There's another one. There must be something in the lines that are getting in there. He's coming out. There we go, Let's look at him. Get out of here, jeez. They're attracted to the sweetness, I think, of the lines, but the lines are rinsed, so this is really frustrating. So I've got to clean out all these earwigs all the time to try and get them out, and I'm not sure if any of it gets in my brew. I have to say, that I don't think it's ever affected my brew, but. I just wanted to show you. Anyway, back to it. We've got our bag, got to open her up. So I'll grab this camera here. These bags are a, a two chamber bag. So you just cut under, you basically have this line where it's sealed, heat sealed. These are cold filled nitrogen flushed bags. So there's no oxygen in there. So when you cut this top line here, you just cut close to the top of the lid. Now you remember, you're opening the actual wart into the air. Whoop. And that's the bag open. So you can have a look at that. You can see inside there, I hope. In there is your concentrate. And on the other side are all your bits you need. Is that a problem with that? I mean, it'd be fine. So we've got Mangrove J Jack's Cider Yeast instruction manual. We have your blueberry cider flavoring we should have some sweetener so this is um artificial sweetener the instructions on to say dry for a dry cider don't add this sachet uh off dry like uh not so dry mid dry uh add half of it and if you want it to be sweet add the whole thing 
So anyway, we'll work on that with the instructions when we read them. I think that was all that's in the packet there. I'll just pop my hand down in here and see if there's anything else there. No, nothing else. So I'm just being careful now. I just don't want to spill that. I'll put that there and I'll cover it up while I do my dextrose. That's where this little packet, this will come in handy. I'll just put it over the top so no dust gets in. This is, this is what I'm just worried about dust getting in there, which is fair enough. So what we have to do now is clean and sanitize all our equipment, which I've done. I have a... A fermenter saw so I'll clean and sanitize. I'll tip the sanitizer out and then oh and then I will get everything else ready. I'm gonna need a, a spoon to stir my stuff my items with. I have my spray bottle of sanitizer, scissors for opening all the bits up, my red wine of course. So what I need to do now is pour the contents of the pouch this beautiful purple stuff. Are you recording? And I wanna basically be ultra careful not to spill it. It is a bit difficult. And I'll use this funnel to make it easier to pour. I'll get this in here in a moment. What I need to do is pour the contents of this into my Fermentosaurus. Now I've got some sanitizer still in there, but that doesn't matter. You can see that I'm pouring it away. It is a little bit thick, of course. I did make sure the valve was closed too, funny enough. And before I put the dextrose in, I'll rinse this little bit of beauty out, take out what's excess, what the, I'll take out the excess of this pouch so that I have as much of the sugars that I need in my system. Just rinse that out with water. And this will definitely help me um, get as much of the extract out as I can. in there as well. Yeah, nice and clean. I'll show you guys in a sec what I've done. So what I've done is I've rinsed this out, gotten all the extract as much as I can, there's a little bit in the corner there, but that's fine. That is now a souvenir or rubbish. Cool. So what I'm gonna do now is move my Fermentosaurus closer to my tap so I can fill it up a bit. And just to make it a bit easier to pour and not destroy what we've got. So I'll put the camera, to the other side, so you guys can see what I'm doing. You probably should have started here, but you know, what do you do? So what I'm doing guys, is I'm filling this up to 20 litres capacity, because I've got three, just under three litres of dextrose to pour in. So we'll get back to you once it's full. So we're full to 20 litres capacity. Um, I have two and a half, two and three quarter litre, I have two and three quarters of a litre of um, dextrose to pour in. So I'll do that now and that'll bring me up to about just under three litres. The reason why I did that is so I've got about 250 mil to put in to get it to <laughs> it's just about on it. <laughs> it's almost spot on. Uh... Mm, so sweet. So that's why I did it. Basically, so I can rinse this out and put a little bit more in. That'll bring it to 23 liters exactly. So the instructions say, top up to 23 liters with cold tap water and stir well. Check liquid temperature is between 18 and 28 degrees. So I shall do that now, if I can find the temperature gauge. 
It feels pretty cool. Oh, freak's sake, it should be in the same spot as the other thing. Oh, right on the wrong spot. Isn't it? There it is. Right. Oh. The temperature gauge should say between 18 and 28 degrees. At the moment it's at 30 degrees Celsius. So I'll have to keep it uh, until it cools down a little bit before I pitch my yeast. So it says, if not, uh, it's too well and we'll give it a temperature, blah, 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 blah. If not, then stand the fermenter in a batch of icy cold water and cool it down. Uh, add the cider yeast. I'll have to add the cider yeast. Add the cider yeast, cider sweetener, and any of the dry additives which may be included, like oak chips. That's the sweetener, and this is blueberry flavouring, so I don't know when that goes in. I will try and keep thinking. Uh, cider sweetener and try and any other dry additives which may include oak chips, flowers, except except for hops. Do not add the cider essence or dry hops. Hear that? Don't add the cider essence yet, and don't add the hops. At this point, it will be required later. It's going to be required later on. Now, I want to make this one a sweet one because um, I don't want to be the only one that can drink it. I want to be able to share it with people out there. And there's a lot of people out there who love sweet drinks. And if this is tasty and sweet. I think they're going to enjoy it. So we'll be putting the whole sachet of sweetener in it. I'll spray it with a bit of sanitizer and I'll cut it and pour it in as well. So my guess is that's an artificial sweetener, so it won't ferment. It'll just be sweet all the time. So I'll have to wait now until this cools down to at least 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, which is gonna take a bit of time because it is a warm day. So what I'll do instead is get this ready to pitch. I'll just put my bits together. Now, like I said, these are all being cleaned and sanitized and everything else. So everything's always gonna be sanitized. So sanitizer on everything before you close it or seal it because it touches the surface of things in the shed. Nothing there, nothing on the ends. That can now go in. And I'll put that in now just to keep the lids, the top sealed, so nothing can fall in until my brew is ready to pitch yeast. So as soon as this is at the right temperature, I'll come back to you and just show you how I pitch yeast. For those of you who haven't seen my channel before, um, pitching yeast is quite simple. You just pour it in. Basically, that's what pitching means. It will activate over about 24 hours and probably ferment for two weeks. So what we do is we just basically pour it in, we open the packet, so I'll spray the packet as well because this packet could have been in the hands of anyone out there. So we spray the packet as well as the scissors, just to hopefully kill any kind of bacteria that may be on there, and cut it, don't tear it, because it, when you tear it it's paper, paper has uh, microscopic fragments, and they will um, they will, uh, they will get into your brew. It probably won't harm it, but anyway. There's my yeast, hope you can see that. I will chuck that in, so, so there's my yeast. So I'm gonna throw that in, and this will basically, the whole packet goes in. So the whole packet goes in, it's like a fine yeast. This one smells interesting, it's got, a, it's got like a, it's got like a flavour to it, which is very unusual. Um, I want to taste it, sorry. Anybody ever tasted yeast before? Wow, it's a good. Oh, it's got a sharp taste to it. Interesting flavour. That is gonna add some essence to this flavour. It really isn't bad, actually, it's really nice. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna just shake that up, just to get a bit of oxygen through the brew. Nicely stirred in. Cider is required to have carbonation, so I'll pop the carbonation. Oh, sorry, I'll pop the lid on and pop the fermenter's uh, pressure gauge on. 
and I, I won't gas it up because I've run out of gas. I know it's weird, but we need to keep oxygen out of our brew once it's finished fermenting. Ah. The reason why I shake it up like this is to increase the oxygen level in the must as well as mix the yeast through. The yeast will eat the oxygen, uh, sorry, the yeast will eat the sugar as well as breathe the oxygen or process the oxygen and make uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol. So that's how we get our bubbles, <laughs> basically, in our brew. Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks, so we'll get back to you and I'll let you know what it tastes like. Cheers. So what I'm doing right now is I'm transferring my apple cider, blueberry flavored apple cider, into my keg. So I'll show you the setup. This is the regulator set at about 15 PSI. I've equalized the pressure in my fermenter at 15 PSI, as well as my keg at 15 PSI. So when I connect it all together, we have no flow of fluids until I open my spunding valve. As soon as my pressure drops below 15 PSI, the fluid flows. And the good thing about it is I purged the keg of all oxygen with CO2 before I started all this. I'm sorry I didn't show you how, to, how I did that. So I've now filled the keg <laughs> and I just remembered something. Um, I know it's going to be uh, carbonated because I had it at 20 pounds of 20 PSI, but I have to empty out the uh, pressure from the keg now to add, would you believe, the blueberry. I was meant to do that before I put it in. So it's going to be a bit stronger, blueberry cider flavoring. That was meant to be added into the fermenter before I transferred it to my keg. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna do it anyway, so I'll just let you guys watch and laugh. So I'll let the pressure out. Now it is carbonated. So I'll let the pressure out so that I could um, actually add this in. <laughs> so I'll just grab some scissors. Okay, so this blueberry flavoring is quite strong. I can smell it now. I'm adding that into the keg. I'll just move that around so you guys can see. Everything's sanitized. So I'll just put the whole lot in. Bit disappointed, I forgot to do it, but. Whoa, that is strong. That's nice, that's nice, huh? Hopefully it'll add to nice flavoring in there. So we'll close this off. I'll spray a bit of sanitizer on the lid. As you can see, I'll show you the uh, the blueberry. There you go, the apple cider. Pop the lid in, big end down, and I've oiled, I've greased all the all these seals. It is hard to do one hundred. Now I will get the pressure and bring it back up to pressure. I need to leave it at twenty pounds to twenty psi. Purge it because I've just let oxygen in the chamber. Now we'll crack it open, put 20 pounds of pressure in there, 15 will do. So I'm just purging. That's it. That is up at 20 pounds PSI or 15 pound PSI. <laughs> this is up to 15 pounds. So while I'm doing that, I'm actually putting the blueberry fra flavoring through it as well. So it's gonna be good. All right. I am gonna grab a sample and taste it without the blueberry flavor. I do have some blueberry flavoring left in this, so I might try and drip that into a glass or a cup like this one. See how much I can get out of this just to see if I get an idea on flavouring. So a couple of drops. Glass. Let the pressure out of my Mentosaurus. I'll move it that for now and see what it comes out with. So just one more. Yeah. Let's see, how we go. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be awkward. This is awkward, ready? Oh, 
Oh, Jack. There it is. Looking pretty clean straight from the keg, uh, from the uh, fermenter. Let's taste it. It smells, still smells um, new, I guess, but I can smell the blueberry and the strawberries. And... Mm. Oh my god, that is nice. Gonna need some time to. Oh my god, <laughs> that is really nice. I am gonna enjoy drinking this. <laughs> it's really good. It's no bad flavours, I can tell. It can taste some of the yeast still, but it's almost carbonated perfectly. Um, I haven't put any carbonation in it. It's been carbonated through through fermenting. It tastes really good. I'm gonna get Sarah to have a drink. She's gonna want to taste this. Mmm. Oh, so good. I'm so glad I did that. It's um not overly over sweet, but it's just beautiful. Just nice. Did you want to have a try of this, Sarah? Would you like to do it on camera? That's really good. That's straight yeah. out of the fermenter. No, Remember that's what? really nice. It's drinkable. Mm, that is really drinkable. Wow. Like it. It doesn't taste like... Mm. I did an apple cider... Mm. Oh, jeez. Years ago when I first started ferment, uh, fermenting. Started doing fermentation. And it was, it was alright, but not great. Mm. This one is the best one I've ever done. So far, it tastes great. I can drink this. Mm. This is really nice. I think everyone's going to want it. <laughs> Every time we come over for dinner, we'll have some. <laughs> cool, thank you. So thanks guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one. And look at this beautiful sunset. <laughs>